All right, hello and welcome guys to another session of the Gosu Academy. Today we'll be doing something I've never done before in any video or in any coaching class. Um, today what we'll be doing is we'll be comparing one of the world's best, if not the world's best currently, uh, players. It's uh, Monacy from G2 and we're going to be comparing him to someone who plays the same role but plays it at a slightly lower level, both in terms of like the teams he is facing the team he himself is playing on but also um you know his own performance so i've uh, picked up first a demo of monacy having a great performance on infernal and it's against you know the team uh who i am working with like not i'm not working with the main team of nip but i'm working with the female team uh and so this will obviously be uh, interesting to watch as well um spoiler alert i haven't watched this demo i haven't watched the other demo that i picked out either uh, ever before so it will be like jumping between rounds and and just talking about what i find interesting basically um but uh also just to make sure that that has been said um i have picked out an inferno demo where monacy has a rating around i think it's 1.89 or something like that and uh afterwards we have a demo of afro from fnatic against saw and he also plays on Inferno and also has a rating uh, at approximately the exact same. So what um, will be interesting here is, can we tell the difference between, you know, the opponents? Can we tell the difference between Monacy and Afro? Even though they have a very comparable performance on the same maps and stuff like this. Um, and also, like, will we um, be able to tell what makes a top pro player so good? And what makes a, what I will call for the sake of this video um, and this session, uh, I will call it a more average pro player. Because obviously any pro player who is, um, you know, inside the top 30 or just in general, any pro player is by no means average. But it's interesting that uh, if you dive really deep into Counter-Strike, you'll be able to tell the difference between someone who is one of the best professionals and one who is more of average caliber player at least at the current moment in time so um i think one of the things i'll be looking out for the most is um how dynamic monacy is able to be because typically top players like the absolute best players in the world they take a lot of freedoms like in their play that other players want just because they have this innate uh, confidence and because you know they they are at this moment, like Monty's probably the best player in the world. Um, and so um, they tend to do things that are kind of bending the rules of the game, but with a good result. And that's uh, what I'm hoping to see with Monty. For Afro, I'm expecting something that's more by the book and more um, controlled in a way, because that is to some extent easier. So actually starting out with a round where he just dies and i think i mean we can we can take a look at some of the rounds that are maybe a little bit more interesting because we can obviously use this uh down here we can check this one let's find one where he gets a couple of kills um here pretty standard stuff he just takes a kill and now this is also something i'll definitely be looking out for um a lot of the times the best way to judge a player's ability is on his ability to well his or hers ability to play late rounds because a lot of people are good in the early rounds they know what kind of peaks they should take or how like what kind of patterns they should play in but it is uh, the case that when you play late round scenarios it's typically uh, very far from uh, what is the norm like it's rather two late rounds look exactly the same whilst it's it happens, uh, you know, typically multiple times a, a match that uh, a f an early round or like the start of a round is going to be the same. Now, notice also that Monacy is really keen on actually being the playmaker. Like in a lot of these angles, even though there is, you know, a lot of risk, he put his back on short um, because he just expects that no one is here and just peek long. But he has at this moment the bigger gun and, you know, since it's Monacy, it's probably also a guy you normally want to have late in the rounds and you want to be setting up. But he has, you know, a good enough read here to understand that he can take this space for free. 
And we saw it in the pitch round as well. He was also going in front on, on that round. So um, that's also typically something you see from the really elite players. Like the ability to create something out of very little. Um, oh, that's a pretty unfortunate flash. You see it here again. It goes in. He gets a kill. Very little time left. And this is also where you can... Oh, did someone say something? Okay, I just just the voices in my head then. Um, but basically, here it's it's a super tough situation. Obviously, he is a little bit lucky in the in the in this case where the guy in pit is Molotov. But with only ten seconds, one is he has to find this other kill on site immediately, and you know, um, just a a really snappy headshot that puts him into a one on one with very low HP that he will eventually lose. Um, but still, I think when we go over to the Afro demo, even though he will obviously also be having a good performance, because that's what I've picked out, um, I wonder how dynamic he will be. Um, I I have to be honest and say Afro is not a player I've watched that much uh, recently, but uh, still I am expecting that... Um, we will see some clear differences. Um, so I think we'll, we'll watch a few rounds of Monesi here. We'll just click on some of the rounds where he has like a lot of kills or or kind of um, yeah areas where he's you know, not dying a lot and, and getting kills. Here we see it again. Even though he is, you know, the AWP player for the team, he actually goes and takes the first point of contact in apps. And also another thing that is very um, good to look out for when kind of checking if someone is like really elite is also uh, i mean it, it is kind of what i said the ability to kind of bend the rules of the game but also do something that requires something extra because uh, you know pro players they will have good and bad games but the elite players they are obviously just a notch or maybe a couple notches better so here for example uh we can go back to it um as I mentioned, Monesi is is actually the one going first, even though uh, Malps is is uh, the first one into balcony room. He gets the kill, and immediately he likely realizes when Isaac is sitting here, it's some kind of a setup. In this case, it's with an AWP here, and you can see now when the orb gets a kill, he's immediately ready to spam this wall to try and either hit Wrinkle so his movement gets messed up. Or potentially get the kill or sort of distract and um, I think this is not something you will see the average face of player uh, do or the average pro uh. so here as well like yeah this is the type of, of stuff I'm <laughs> I'm talking about like look at this so let's just talk about what's going on here for a second um for g2 in this moment obviously they knew that they got two kills in apps and uh, without knowing exactly what roles people play i want to say uh, isaac is the pit player for nip and so knowing that they killed the pit player and the awp player they know that there is at max right now uh, one more player on the a bomb so, i mean there could be potentially more but it is very normal that it would be, you know, maximum three people here. And uh, this is why they don't immediately speed up. is because they are expecting someone else. But also, um, they kind of can disregard the right side of A. Like, uh, when looking out from apps, this is the right side, right? Or like, yeah, whatever. They can, they can disregard this part um, simply because... Um, They've killed the pit player, and it's unlikely that they would have an app setup and then also have the last A player just be hiding in pit, because then he he doesn't really have a role. So Monesi knows that if he's looking for the kill, it would be obviously short, long, uh, kind of like towards a small pit or side. And so first he peeks the side angle, and now as the smoke is coming in, he knows that the like any CT who is behind the smoke will try to beat it. Um, the reason why this is the case is the small pit smoke, so the smoke that lands here, 
is one that is really difficult to go through late and um, basically impossible to go through if you allow the tea's time to set up. But it is a smoke that if you uh, can make it through before it, it pops completely, then uh, you likely will have a, a chance at a kill or you will have a chance at at least having impact in this round. Like They need to help Maxter because if they stay behind the smoke, then... Uh, the round is basically over. Like they will, with three people here, trade out Maxter, and then they will be stuck behind the smoke, and the round is over. So this is just a good read from Modesty. He expects someone to be trying to move into the side, and he gets res. But you can see as well him zooming there on the side, and him now preparing a flash and stuff like this. Um, it is because they still know Maxter is one of the A players, so they are going to be wanting to take him out. Now this is like. A perfect example of, I mean, this is an elite player, um, and and one of the best, or like one of the biggest reasons why you can see that this is someone who is special, is because if you look at his statistics, they are phenomenal. But if you look at a round like this in isolation, this AWP move where he's now jumping out of apps, it's not something he's doing for himself. It's something he's doing for his team. Like, the idea of him doing this is to throw off any rifle who is holding him. So, if the rifle is playing, uh, like, under the roof short, then Monesi is now going to, like, check this. If he is here in pit, he's going to kill Monesi. If he's here in pit, he's going to kill Monesi. And if he's side on some kind of an off angle, he's probably also going to kill Monesi. So, he's kind of jumping out just as bait, uh, so that he can uh, not get the kill, but find the information quickly for his team exactly before Alex, for example, comes through the smoke. And instead, you know, he checks short and he, as I mentioned, I mean, there's a Molotov here and also he can kind of disregard this side of pit or just in general pit is very unlikely. So now he keeps searching for the information. He checks side and so on. And now obviously jumps on top of the box and kills Maxter. But to not only be able to make uh, so many calculations in a high pressure environment um you know realizing i am the one with the orb uh but in this round i don't need to be the star i have lower hp than my teammates and for me the right thing now is just creating the space and finding the information quickly um that is what makes him elite because even though he does this which is the right move he actually ends up putting himself in a spot where he does get another kill and i mean at this point he's completely won the round um, so being able to do this and face it is one thing being able to do this on stage or in big tournaments is a completely different uh, beast and um, I want to bet one hundred, like I want to bet $1,000 this time around even though the demo will be watching of Afro that he will also be having what's called sort of a life game like it's, it's a game of his life um, a super good performance uh, against a good opponent and stuff like this um, we won't see anything as crazy as what we just saw. This as well. Holy. Like, so here as well, obviously always we can go into the smaller details. So Modesty is holding for the swing across mid, and he gets the kill on Rinko, who is the scout here. And it's hard to catch. I'll try to see if I can catch it with uh, stopping the demo here. But after killing Rinko, there is one small moment where you can actually see someone is pushing mid. It is such a tight window, but Modesty, he understands. Like, it, this is not a read based off of what Rinko is doing. This is the this is because his uh, you know brain. On the, like he, he spots that one pixel basically that's available and notices okay there's a foot here this can only mean that they're pushing it and that's why he immediately sets up for someone to you know wide swing here he gets that kill as well he doesn't catch the pixel on res and so he just assumes that okay that was what there was but still he manages to make the most out of a bad situation like here he is uh, not expecting someone to be down mid but he still manages to readjust his crosshair and get a no scope off that actually could have hit. Um, just for my own curiosity, maybe maybe someone else is interested as well. Let's uh, let's check it here. 
and see how close this no scope actually was. Um, so even though he got caught completely off guard, and even though you know he didn't even have time to zoom in, and and he's also you know he's kind of moving and he's trying to actually just get into cover so that he doesn't die here. He still gives himself a really good chance of hitting this shot. And um, this is also typically what you can uh, tell when it's someone who is, uh, you know, something extra special is they get thrust into a bad position, but they will still always maximize that position. Like um, they can have their backs turned and, and whatever. Um, and even though they might not get the kill, they are extremely close to getting that kill uh, when they basically shouldn't. Um, and judging from this round, he doesn't get any more kills. We'll, we'll watch this round and I think we'll watch... Um, I see two more that looks like 3Ks. We'll watch those rounds. They are kind of the highlight rounds. I think this is against, this is against Eco. Uh, yeah, so let's skip this. Um, I thought I saw... Oh yeah, here. There's at least a passage of play where he's getting multiple kills. Let's go back just a little bit to get the contact of the round. So... Um, one of the things you can also tell, or like one of the indicators of an elite uh, player is their ability to um, be comfortable in an uncomfortable position. So you can put, like, you can ask them to do things that a normal player or even a normal pro player would maybe say no to, or a normal pro player would do, but would do poorly because it is uncomfortable for them. Um, I'm not just talking about like asking them to do certain things while they're in a high pressure environment and stuff like this, but it's also like here, um, I only caught it quickly. Now he's boosting his teammate and he's playing up on short. Now he's going to walk back. And the reason why he's walking back here is actually just to be able to zoom without the opponents uh, hopefully hearing it. And now you can see his teammates are in a mid setup. Now, Monacy, because the T's are not doing pressure on B and they haven't done anything in mid, is worried now about a potential uh, apps pop or contact apps. But this angle is horrendous to hold with an AWP. Like, this is not something that will likely uh, grant you uh, many kills. And... Uh, uh, two seconds. Uh, you can just talk, my what's up? Uh, no, I don't have. Okay, okay. thank Sorry. you. No, it's fine. Yes, it's all good. Okay, yeah, that was my uh, fiance. Uh, so anyway, um, so this is is an angle where obviously we're not gonna see anyone come out from apps, but it is just something where if you would ask probably an Afro uh, or some some other let's call it middling AWP player. Um, to, to do something like this, you know, they might do it, but the result, if someone would be coming out of apps now, would be far better um, with Monacy and would probably create some kind of magical situation um, just out of nothing. And here you see it as well. He, he kind of peeks deeper into apps, even though this is like, it's, it's angles that are good for one kill, but where he'll be, he'll be traded pretty quickly. And the reason he's doing this again, just want to reiterate, um, there is no pressure on B. Nico is playing it alone, but he's not getting any pressure. There's no pressure on mid. And so he feels like something is up. We can see quickly he adjusts over to mid when the pressure comes in. And we'll see. Hits a really, really quick shot onto Res. Immediately goes back and takes over S. Smokes it off. Um, and now that's that's just that. Um, we can see it as well, even if you look at the fine details of this, like this smoke, having to land it while moving, like he wants it specifically to bounce on the, yeah, I guess people watching the video can see my mouse. I'm not sure if people in the academy can see my mouse right now, but he wants it specifically to bounce on the upper part of this doorway so that it immediately bounces down and lands somewhat deep. And he does this while taking, I think, even a, a small uh, back step while crouching. Um, 
it doesn't look that good if you just check it quickly, but if you see, or like, if, if you slow it down and stuff like this, but he's doing this with very little time to actually think about what he's planning to do. And um, this is just an example of like the finer details. Like, uh, obviously we're not watching many of, of his bad rounds because we have to skip through this demo a little bit. But it is still interesting to me that, um, you know, even small things like hitting the, the, the smoke grenade here in the completely right spot is, um, is something that he just does without making it look difficult at all. Now, this is actually pretty poorly done by Modesty. He wasn't really close enough to trade. Does he have time? I don't actually think he has. Oh, he does. He does just about have time. So, there's also another case. I mean, he puts himself in actually a pretty bad situation um, by not really being close enough to trade. I think Isaac gets a little bit lucky on getting a double kill here as well. But, um, yeah, like, uh, he, he still managed to win the round. Another thing as well. A lot of the, well, basically every one of the really elite players that we've seen uh, throughout Counter-Strike has had the ability to be very, um, not just dynamic in rounds, but be dynamic in roles as well. Like, think about some of the greats that we've had in Counter-Strike uh, just in ye recent years. Like, someone like Sai Wu, for example. Um, he is an AWP player for his team, but I believe he is potentially the pro AWP player with the most rifle frags. And someone like Monacy is also more than capable on a rifle. Someone like Simple, who is basically the, the greatest player of all time in CSGO, you know, was a rifle player who transitioned into being an AWP player, but he was then also playing a lot of rifle in rounds. And um, this ability to stay unpredictable and uh, do well in any given situation is, is really good. Like, I promise you, Monacy is calling a lot of rounds, um, helping, you know, his IGL. He's coming up with, with new, um, yeah, new tactics, but also just new small plays. Like, he's an innovator, and um, he could very freely float between roles. Like, if you would take Monacy of today and you would ask him to play Anchor, he could fulfill the role of an anchor on any top team um, where he speaks the language, right? If you would ask him to be an IGL, he could most likely fulfill the the role of being IGL to a sufficient um, level. Maybe not a number one level, but definitely like a, let's say, a top five um, team level. Um, and the same if you would ask him to be, you know, a, a rotating rifle, or being an AWP or being an entry or whatever, he, he is able to do it all. And that's typically what, when you look at like the greats or the really elite players, they can float between roles with without even really um, like having any, any issues with that. Um, so let's uh, watch this round. I think this will be the last round we'll watch of Monacy and then we'll go over to Afro. The reason I've decided also, because um, I, I didn't really get into this, I, I thought about do I want to watch Afro first or do I want to watch Monacy first? And uh, I thought that if we watch Afro first, I was uh, thinking we might not really know what to look for. And so we would just be watching a demo and then afterwards we would be trying to fit it to Monacy. So I think by starting with the, with the demo of the like, elite player um we can look for for small things that uh, kind of make the difference uh, between him and, and like an average pro player and then we can try to kind of um use that to gauge uh afro's level so here really important round of the game also by the way one of the things that that you know make uh, elite players elite they are um, I, not even nine times out of ten they are ten times out of ten um, big game players it's not possible basically to be you know a Messi or a Ronaldo or a Simpo or a Saibu or a Monesi or a Donk or whatever and not be uh, good under pressure and not be a, a big time player 
And if you're sitting there today, uh, let's say you're a young guy uh, or a girl or, or in between, and you um, are right now not good under pressure or you're right now not feeling like a big game player, this is something that you can um, learn with experience, right? It comes naturally for people who are as skilled as Modesty because they are so good that I think sometimes against lesser opponents, they will almost um, not care enough to actually turn it up. Um, anyone here who have not watched the Netflix documentary called The Last Dance, I heavily recommend it. It's uh, an amazing documentary. I've watched it far too many times. And it's about, you know, the, the well, probably one of the greatest sportsmen of all time, Michael Jordan. You can learn a lot about his mindset, how he approaches games, how he approaches um, so many things. And there is this uh, one uh, part of the documentary I think about sometimes where uh, I don't even remember why, but there's someone on the other team who has given him a reason to dislike him. And it's not even like a big reason or something like that. But Michael Jordan is looking for any reason to have anger or hatred towards his opponents because that's what fuels him to play even better. If it's a smaller game and stuff like that, you know, he will still perform very well just like Monesi will, but it's in the big games where, you know, things are online and you need someone to really step up. And um, that's typically when you see the elite player shine. So here, 12 11, obviously, this is not like a major grand final or something like this, but it is still 15 11 on um, what can close the uh, best of three here. And it is when you look to your best player, it is when you look to, you know, your your star or your elite caliber player. So let's see what, what Monesi can cook up in this round. For anyone who is confused about why he's holding this angle, um, it's not an angle you see that often in pro play, I guess, and especially not in face it. The idea is basically that if you're sitting here from CT, this is the kind of expected angle. And this is a kind of off angle that still works well because if you take, like if someone goes out and peeks here and you take the shot, you can always, or at least let's say nine times out of 10, um, get back into the bomb site without dying. And um, it's, you know, one of the one of the best things about Monacy, which that's not really something that is necessarily a level difference, but it's like a stylistic difference. Monacy is an AWP player who um, misses a lot of shots, but he plays in a way where he allows himself to miss shots. And um, someone like Sai Wu, for example, he doesn't miss many shots. He basically always hits and he plays also um, with maybe more risk in his angles because he is really safe. I'm not saying that Monacy is, is bad or that he misses um, like all the time or stuff like that, but Compared to other elite level orpers, Monesi, uh, and this is just, you know, uh, what do you call it, like anecdotal uh, <laughs> evidence, like this is just from my own uh, eye test. Um, but when I watch Monesi play, I think he is the elite level orper that I've seen miss the most. But it's because he goes for crazy shots and he, he puts himself in positions where he always has a chance for a second shot or third shot or fourth shot. Fourth shot. So... We'll see it here. He's super quick. Um, he's got lightning quick reactions, but then also um, his movement is so good. So he typically has a uh, good time at missing, but still um, getting back. This one he won't miss though. Really quick shot. And as you can see, he managed to get back into the side and the T's have absolutely no chance of trading. Now he repositions in the side, flashes the block. And here again, crazy, crazy, quick and clean shot by Monazi. And two openings in a, in a round like this is typically enough on its own. But uh, from looking at the bottom, it seems like he will get yet another. Yeah, there's basically just, there's just no chance. Like, uh, None of these three players that he killed in the most important round of the game even had a chance of uh, seeing him. So that is, uh, I think, quite interesting. Now let's move over to, and I feel bad for saying it, because, you know, 
I think uh, Afro is uh, a, a pretty decent player, especially I, I think I've even played him a few times and I disliked playing him because I always thought he was uh, quite good. Um, but this is a type of guy who is, you know, a middle of the pack opa on a, I believe Fnatic are like maybe number 17 or something like that in the world right now. Um, this is obviously one of his greatest matches, so maybe we will see a lot of a lot of good. Um, I guess even that's kind of interesting, but if we look at the bottom, he will actually have a really rough start to this match and then just start going nuclear. Um, I talked about it a little bit already, but to set the scene, uh, Afro and Fnatic here are playing against Saw, which is also... like I would say Fnatic is one of the better tier three teams well if you count them as a tier three team i would probably argue they are one of if not the best tier three team right now um and uh, the same with saw i think they've had a little bit of a dip in form in uh, recent times but they are also like around the same tier as fanatic so we're looking at a match that is um, quite even and i think um we'll do the modesty treatment here Let's skip the rounds where he doesn't have a whole lot of impact and we'll see, uh, we'll focus on the rounds where he is, is doing uh, doing good, where he's getting a lot of kills. So, again, things to look out for that I suspect we will see either uh, less of or we won't see at all is his ability to stay dynamic in the mid-round and to kind of translate that from Counter-Strike uh, speech to like normal human language um, obviously being dynamic is just his ability to adjust all the time um, and when I say in the mid round it's it's like not not at the start of rounds it's when things are happening that are unpredictable how does he approach those rounds or how does he um, yeah perform in those um, like in that part of the round basically um, we would like to look for his ability to kind of take control of the game because Monesi, when we watched him in his best rounds, he was really taking the fight to his opponents and using that star power where you could just tell he knows he is better than his opponents and he wants them to know it as well. Um, so that is also something where I haven't watched an, an Afro demo for uh, uh, quite a long time, um, but I suspect we will see less of this as well. And then I also think we will see less of this um, putting yourself in an uncomfortable spot, kind of on purpose, and uh, seeing, like, making something brilliant out of it. So these are, like, the the things to look out for. Um, I suspect that Afro will have a more kind of controlled... Um, yeah performance it will look less uh surprising so obviously a good kill here from him now molotov skip ahead a little bit just working his angles Pretty standard stuff. This is a pretty good peek. Um, and that's also a nice shot. Uh, the reason why this peek is so good is Afro at this point knows he killed the AWP player um, of Saw. And so when this Molotov comes in, I wish that the radar would like look a little bit more normal. Maybe if the round restarts. There we go. So he knows when the ct is molotoving triple he is right now focused on if someone who is standing here hidden is moving either side and so afro peeking from here is just going to catch him off guard if the ct had an orb i suspect afro would not have made this choice but in this case um the ct didn't have an orb and he knew that so because of that he um, shows the peak and it was, it was uh, very good. Now let's jump to another round where Afro is getting killed. But 
that's you know a good smoke spam and i think maybe he will get another one yep so i mean you know this is a good round um but so far Efro has eight kills i mean we've seen uh, five of them and i wouldn't say i mean i think the one where he peaked ct it was not something where i'm sitting and thinking whoa this guy is the next big thing um but it was what i would expect from a you know let's call it a top 20 uh opa because he's in a top 20 team right um who is performing uh pretty decent like uh like on a on an on an average day let's say obviously this is one of his better matches and it looks like he will go absolutely ham on ct side so there'll probably be more to see but uh I will try as much as possible to stay unbiased because obviously I kind of know what my opinion is. Um, and so it's easy for me to say every time Afro gets a kill, ah, this was not something special. And every time Monesi gets a kill, I will sit there and say, oh my God, this was the craziest thing and blah, blah, blah. Um, I will try as much as possible to stay unbiased. You know, I would love to be uh, proven wrong. Maybe Afro is uh, an AWP player we can look out for in the future. But from these five kills we've seen, which were actually rounds where he, um, you know, had passive impact because it was, you know, two rounds where the numbers were getting kind of close and stuff like this. Um, it was clear that all of these kills happened in the late round and it was not uh, much of Afro kind of, uh, yeah, I, I would not say he was doing something super special i mean nothing like what we saw from monacy where he jumped into to the like he first of all got this really quick kill on that guy and jumped out with his knife and then checked short and he assumed pit was clear and like he went up and he killed maxter and stuff like this we also didn't see really um just what we watched of of Monesi, where he took a risk put his back to short and yeah this was a good risk uh, when Monesi did it because the pit player had just used the defensive smoke or something like this that's probably why he assumed okay the pit player won't be doing uh, a defensive smoke while they're also out playing short so he's gonna focus on peaking long and stuff like this but uh, this is you know taking some uh, kind of freedom that you typically only take if you're really uh, feeling the game or you are like an elite type player so um, we'll see if if Afu will do something uh, similar. In this round, he is going to get a lot of kills, and he doesn't even have Kevlar, so that will be interesting to see what he what he does here. Yeah, he's probably going to get a one tap here. Nice. So, yeah, talking about why does this work out the way that it does here? Um, I think this is down to prep. Probably a Fnatic realized that Saw like to play default pistols. That's majority of teams on Inferno uh, like to play default pistol on T. And he on purpose holds an angle which is an off angle so that when Story goes to check this, Afro has a good uh, chance of getting a kill. And then they have a flash set up so that he can get away or he can take more fights. So um, pretty, pretty. Uh, like just good and like that is a a nice skill for sure really really uh yeah nice skill and that's also a nice skill here you can see though um the difference in i would say level between the opponents monacy were playing and the opponents that fnatic are currently playing um i don't think Monacy will be given many freebies like this where a T is with the bomb and no CT smoke scaling up in a straight line to the bomb side without checking CT. Um, this is a gift and I think is something that will very rarely happen um, closer to the level that G2 is playing at. So while this is obviously uh, Efro doing a good job at you know taking the chances that are given to him, I think it's an unlikely chance to uh, see at the top level. And this is a great round from Afro. No Kevlar. 
didn't even take a point of damage um, and got four kills. But, and I, I this is why I'll call on you people. I, you people, it sounds like, <laughs> I don't know, but you you guys, like uh, everyone who's here at the academy. Am I crazy to think that even though obviously these four kills were nice from Afro, it was not... N not any of these skills gave me the feeling that uh, he did something extra. You know what I mean? Yep. Because like the opponents did the mistakes, not like not that he did like an amazing play or something. Yeah, I think he definitely, you know, he performed his yep, job yep, yep. well. But uh, you know, with like the kills that yeah, sorry. Uh, the the uh, the man who is planting the bomb is planting like on an open side. Like, yeah, yeah, and I think when we were watching the Modesty demo, I mean, at least the kills that we saw, maybe we just got lucky and picked out the exact rounds where he had these kind of things where he did something extra. But I think there was, um, it felt like Modesty was getting kills that were more difficult, let's say it like that, and um, yeah, that's what's you know quite interesting. Because um, this is part of what you can yeah, judge a player on. Sometimes as well, there are players, like pro players as well, where they are good at getting the hard kills and they are not so good at getting the easy kills. But um, most of the really elite players, like they have a really big range. Like they can take the, the easy kills and they can take the hard kills as well, of course. Um, if... if and it looks like Efro might be getting two kills now. Um, this is, you know, him playing MP9 against pistols that seemingly are going to rush up middle. That's a good kill. Now he's baiting for his teammate. And he's baiting a lot for his teammate. And now when they have gathered up, he's going to push and get a kill. Again, uh, kind of what I said. I'm expecting Afro to play extremely by the book and play his rounds well. Obviously, he's getting his kills. I think this was good. But again, I didn't uh, see anything where I'm, I'm taken aback and thinking, whoa, this was really crazy. Or here he, you know, made a move that I was not anticipating or he was, you know, um, he's doing his job and he's, he's doing it well here as well. They double nade deep. He gets two kills. Now we probably get the last. Um, but looking at Monacy's performance, we didn't see him get really any eco frags. Oh, I guess he did get, well, it wasn't even really pistols he killed, but there was this one round where the CTs uh, pushed on him mid, and uh, he got Rinko who was peeking with a scout, and then he got Isaac who was down with the MP9 and stuff like this. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, so far, we've seen Efro already kill like five pistols. So, um, also one thing to note, and we will see maybe this changes in some of the future rounds. I especially want to see this round where he where he dies here actually, because um, in these rounds he hasn't really been like tested um, that heavily, and it has felt like he has been playing for sure inside of his comfort zone. It would be great to see if we can find some rounds where he is maybe a little bit further out from his comfort zone. So where things are happening really quickly around him or he's put into a position that is kind of uncomfortable and stuff like that. And we can see how he deals with it because... Um, yeah, again, that is what I think is one of the best indicators of if you are like elite level, uh, an elite level player or not. This, for example, you know... Yeah, not the most difficult kill. Obviously good for him that he holds the long smoke. But in terms of difficulty of getting this kill, it was uh, not one of the most difficult. I think we can agree. But let's see. He gets another two kills in this round. He rotates on over. No. He's waiting. Molotov comes in. 
That's a nice shot. And that's also a nice shot. So, yeah, really good. Um, I guess you could make the argument, actually. Oh no, what did I do? Uh, I think we were right around here, right? No, we were right around here. Um, I think you could make the argument if we have to be a little bit, um, yeah, was like nitpicky. When he gets this kill on Roman, and he peeks this, and he doesn't see anyone dark immediately, and he peeks this, and he doesn't see anyone here, him swinging out here is actually quite bad. Um, it might not seem that bad, and he also gets away with it, but at this moment, he is in one of the best positions to trade anyone who wants to peek from Banana. So if he waits for his teammates to go onto the bomb and press it, he can always swing, and he should be able to catch the T because for the T to peak the bomb, they will have to be quite far out. So when the T starts shooting, Efro can swing and he can catch the T as he is falling back. Um, him taking this fight early, it's not that there's something directly wrong with it, but it is more risky because if he instead would lose this one-on-one, -on -one, now the CTs are both towards the side. One will have to press the bomb and the other will have to hold. And that is sort of a losable scenario. Instead, here, after uh, Afro gets the kill on the pool guy, he could simply just choose to wait. Uh, like, he could peek still the angles like he did, but when he didn't get contact, he could, you know, wait and be the the, the swing factor here. So, um, this is something where I don't want to call it immaturity in his decision-making, because I, you know, I don't think it's actually that bad. But it is something that is... Um, him taking the duel here, I think, is a lower percentage play than him uh, chilling and waiting for his teammates to press the ball. Let's see. That's a nice kill. And now, it's a kill as well. And now they have the bomb, and the round is pretty much over. Um, I want to also, by the way, bring up just as a small thing uh, the Monacy demo. He had almost the exact same rating as as Afro, um, but the Monacy demo was longer, and that is uh, relevant for two reasons. Obviously, if a match goes for longer, it means that the teams are at least in that specific matchup, more evenly matched. And also, it's typically easier to get a higher rating in a short match, because if you have a very short match and you win it more convincingly, you will almost automatically have better stats. So this match is going to end 13-7, and the other one ended 13-11. So, um, yeah, that's that's that. Let's see, he's going to die now. And yeah, I don't know, let's just let's just watch it. I think he doesn't expect Boiler here because he um like his teammate has been pushed. I think there must have been like some kind of crazy timing where Mutis snuck across. Okay, so Crims is actually just holding this. So he snuck across mid and went this way, which is, you know, kind of unlikely, but yeah, I mean, you could say as well here that there isn't really a reason for him to push forward at the end of the round. It would make sense to push forward a little bit like he's doing if they want to, like, take away Mutius' weapon. Um, but yeah, if Mutius was intent on saving... Then he would probably be too far away for Afro to really um, too much anyway. But yeah, again, I don't think this is something that Afro is is doing wrong or bad necessarily. It's just how it is. But I think as well from watching this demo so far, it seems like Afro is less of a playmaker and more of a facilitator. Like here, for example. 
the actual playmaker in this round is Blimef. And Afro is more like the guy helping set up plays or the guy who is, um, you know, closing rounds, which is not wrong. Um, there are plenty of, well, not plenty of, but there are definitely some greats, uh, Get Right, Coursera, who are, like, who are much more notorious for being good late round players. But um, I do think the difference between the Afro demo and the Monesty demo so far is that uh, yeah, Monesty took the fight to the opponents and really made them feel like they had something to fear. Like you could tell he played as if he was the best player in the world. And Afro, it's more like he's um, doing what he's been told. If that makes sense. Okay, that's actually crazy that he dies like that. I think just for the sake of uh, getting a few more rounds in here, I want to watch because uh, I don't think Afro will have many rounds uh, left here on the CG side for his being tasked to do a whole lot. Like, I guess there is one more round here where he's gonna get two kills. We'll see. Let's follow this round. So this is pretty, you know, it's good awareness. He smokes off apps and he does this, uh, you know, just to block apps. But then also he recognizes that someone could try to be pushing in front of apps and he gets the kill. So that's, that's actually a pretty good read. Um, nothing crazy special, but still, it's pretty decent read. And now he's playing pit um, with orb, and playing pit with orb is very good. It's something I also like, but I do think it is a more risky decision when you have no teammates close to you, and also because he just did use a smoke and apps, it means if the T's were to push. Uh, short and most of him out of position he is not able to stay so that's maybe where you could argue yeah you see the Molotov come in it actually does fail like uh, everything works out in the end but it is uh, yeah maybe not what MNC would have done let's say it like that Let's catch some of his deaths here real quick. We can see, um, just out of curiosity, I want to see, like, here, for example, um, when they're retaking Banana. He's, like, third guy in. Now, he is backing off, which is fine. You get fine that he's backing off, and, you know, that's it. That's fine. Now he almost gets caught with his fence down. And then he is put into a position where, I mean, this is just difficult for Afro to really get much from. There's like a double mid setup and like he also does take this kind of a risk that we saw Monashi take earlier. But obviously when we saw Monashi do it, it was a way different round here. Afro has to try and create something where it's basically already a lost round. Um, we can we can skip to this uh, situation as well and see what he accomplished in this round. So he is definitely a little bit more uh, aggressive and a little bit more the initiator than we've seen him in most rounds. But here, for example, like this is where I think you can see he is. I don't want to say green because I think you know he is. I don't think Efro is so young, and I do think he has quite a lot of experience, but. This is a round where you you only need to watch it one time to kind of agree with yourself. This is this doesn't look like an elite type player. Like you know, he shoots and stuff, and now he gets blind, and then he just starts reloading while he's getting pushed and just he stands completely still. Obviously, he just doesn't expect this kind of an aggressive move from the CTs, and I will say that it is unexpected. But if you compare the time when Monesi got caught off guard by the like Res having pushed deep into mid, which yeah Monesi didn't expect, he at least gave himself a chance with the no scope and managed to f get himself behind a wall. And he did like again some sort of smaller details, like he made the most out of a bad situation. Here, I think Efro is making the least out of a bad situation, and it's not that I will say like 
I want to make sure that everyone understands. I'm not saying Afro is a bad player. I'm not claiming that I would be able to do it better than him. Um, you know, I'm not trying to argue that Afro is is shit. That's not what this session is about at all. This session is just about there is a clear line between who is a world beater and who is um for lack of better word and an afro right like this is a good professional player this is one of the best players in the world like um and yet from what we've seen in this demo so far it does not compare to monacy and it is not just you know the difficulty of the kills it's the you know he just doesn't take over the game in a way that monacy does he just doesn't um he isn't as dynamic he isn't as moving he doesn't seem as calm under pressure he doesn't he isn't as much of a playmaker he isn't like there's so many things that he isn't doing as well as monacy in this demo and we've picked a demo where he is also having an extremely good rating this is one of afro's best matches but if this is one of afro's best matches um and there still is this very clear line between the two then like there's no other thing to say than there is a a level of difference right like even though these two are both some of the greatest players in the world if you look on like a global scale or even if you look on a, a region scale like europe or even if you would say these are two of the like afro is what would you even say like a top two top three orb in france i guess it's like maca and it's him and i don't think there are any better french orbs right now um maybe i'm missing someone but i don't think so so like he is a top two orb in france which is one of the greatest counter strike nations of all time and monazi is you know he's the best player in the world but he's he like these are both some of the finest players on the planet and still, if I'm watching these two demos and I'm picking who I want in my team, no offense to Afro, he's a great player, but he is not Monacy, right? And that's uh, what's so interesting is that even though these are two of the best players in the world, um, you can still see what is the difference between like a top, top, top player, like an elite player. And someone who is a good professional player. Because I do think Afro is a good professional player. And his ability to also stay calm in these matches. And he does seem like he is in control for most of what he does. Like you can tell he is not that nervous um, and stuff like this. But he lacks the extra that Monacy is doing in my opinion. So let's follow this last round and then let's uh, actually maybe we'll watch one more because he does go on like a little bit of a death streak here and we'll see if it just comes down to his team you know dying without him and then like that's it do you think that could be due to how g2 is playing monesty and monesty's confidence or mm. or is it just diff or just completely different stratosphere as a player like i think for sure <clears throat> I think for sure that there's an argument to be made that also Afro is just not set up to be the star the same way that Monacy is. But I also do believe that, you know, for you to be the star of the team, you have to be the best player, right? So it's always like a, a, a chicken and the egg or type thing where what came first? Monacy being a super good player and then being set up or monacy being set up to be the best player and then being the best player and it's difficult to kind of know for sure if it's one or the other but um the best players they are going to be set up because they are the best but if they were not already extremely good they wouldn't be set up if that makes sense maybe it's a shitty answer but it's the best i can come up with it's you know yeah, it makes sense. when i was playing professionally and i was 
playing extremely good and dropping 1.2 and 1.3 average ratings past three months and stuff like this i can tell you all my teammates wanted to do was jump for me but in the later stage of my career when i was maybe an awp player with 1.05 you know i was not set up as much and it's you automatically set up the win condition right so modesty is more of a win condition than afro is and because of that his team will you know commit more resources to make sure that he is going to be um, the guy who uh, is getting set up but here as well like just just picture monesi in this situation right like even i think effort does a good job here they kill someone close mid and he even predicts like there could be the awp long since he's not taking shot he multiples him out of position now he goes out and he takes mid but i think just if monesi would have played this round as soon as he hears someone burn here and they return with the molotov he would immediately piece together the round okay so the op was long this means we only have someone playing right side and so if i run in now then maybe i can get okay blimif doesn't have a flash but maybe i can you know molotov pit and i can play really quick and then body can trade me and i can whatever whatever but here it's like everything with afro in this round is going slower than i would anticipate it would if it was monesi like Okay, he did the Molotov, then he was standing a little bit in mid. Then now he took a little bit more space. Now he's peeking short. Now he's going to Molotov. But then he got a little bit blind. And then he got a little bit blind again. And now, like... Yeah. I don't know. Actually, I think this is this is pretty uh, well done by Afro. He is pretty dynamic in this round. He goes in and, and uh, creates the space and stuff like this. But... Yeah. Uh, I do still think that there is some... I wouldn't say level of hesitation, but just he's less in flow, is what it seems. But it's also almost impossible to be as much in flow as Monty is. Let's watch this last situation where he dies. Um, and let's see how that happens. So he's bringing the bomb through apps. He's doing his due diligence and, and making sure everything's clear. There's a couple of USPs. He played safe as well. And now they've cleared out long, more or less. He holds up. Misses the shot. Oh, he didn't even die here this round, actually. Sorry. This is the next round. So here he is actually going for... Yeah, actually, he doesn't. But yeah, there's also very little aggression from Afro in the early round. Like... In the rounds where we've we've seen him get kills, none of them have been like early round. And in the rounds where he's died, he has also not really died trying to make something happen in the early round. Like here, for example, like he wants to go for a peak on banana. That's clear. And something, I guess the amount of utility and also I think actually maybe someone messes up a smoke here. Because I think is that is it Crimson smoke? Hang on. No, he's doing it here. What smoke lands here? Because I thought it had like a... Yeah, it is Crims. I think. I think it looks like a miscommunication. Uh, oh, maybe this... I don't know, it doesn't really work that well. But maybe this smoke is really just to turn off the, the Molotov so he has something to fall back through. That could be... But either way, at least he, he shies away from a fight. And then he goes back and ends up doing nothing. And now they're taking Banana and eventually he's going to just get spammed through the smoke. I want to say with 100% certainty, like Monesi, if he would not, like, I think the reason he doesn't want to go for this peak is because, okay, he sees on the utility, he thinks the, the CTs are 3B. But I think if this was Monesi, it would look like this he would run into banana he would see okay they're doing whatever 3b maybe he would take a peek or maybe if he would run back he would immediately run back on the right hand side of the wall and immediately run up mid and try to contact mid instead with orb like he will recognize the situation and think okay what can i do to uh create something now and i just feel like that extra gear or maybe even extra two gears afro is just missing uh, in this demo what do you guys think 
I think it's just a play style thing. He seems to be a very passive offer. Or as long as he's a cl- very aggressive and very confident with his mechanics. Yeah. Yeah, no, I kind of agree. But I want to say if I would go and look at a Jam demo, who's also a very passive AWP player, he would be doing. Um, and it's something we could do in a future session, but I, I think played... James is a more proactive player despite being passive. Okay. How how do you explain that? How can you be I mean, proactive and passive? I mean, you can still be proactive by just um I don't know how to word it properly, but like I think I watch James sometimes because I am kind of like a very slow player. I think this is more Virtus Pro playing really slow, trying to Trying to um, gain that control slowly. Yeah. Um, but I can't really name what Jam exactly does in an example, but um, he definitely uh, wouldn't have done what uh, Afro would have done. He probably would have taken the fight as well, to be fair. Yeah, I, I can't say for certain. I think maybe also Jam wouldn't go for that many peaks. I just feel that someone like Jam is still even though he's a pretty passive player, he still plays a big part in controlling the game. Like, he is a guy who will... Like, well, I've played Jame a couple of times, uh, more than a couple of times, four times maybe. Uh, actually, I think way more. Um, and, like, at least after this Pro, you know, started winning and stuff like that, because I also played Jame when he was more like a nobody like me. <laughs> Um, like you are scared of playing Jane, but you are not scared. I think, like even though Afro ends the 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 match with a rating of one point nine, I think if you would ask Saw afterwards if they felt like they were getting owned by Afro, I don't think they would say yes. But I think if you would go and ask Nip if they felt like they were getting owned by Monacy, they would all say yes. And I think it's it's like a difference of not just play style, but also. Like, if Afro was in every late round just winning clutch after clutch after clutch after clutch and no one can break him, then it's also like, holy shit, okay, this guy really carried the match. But I think, you know, he had a pistol round where he got a lot of good kills and he had some rifle rounds here and there where, where he also did quite well. But there were also some rounds where it was just, you know, eco frags and, and stuff like this. And most of the rounds, it was like, if he got a kill, it was one kill. And that's also... Uh, sometimes a good indicator like Monacy in the rounds where he got kills it was oftentimes multi kills um so yeah i don't know maybe also people here in the academy maybe people even on youtube whatever will will say that they think i went into this sort of experiment biased um that's obviously something that's really difficult to avoid but i do think um if we would have removed the names it would have been super easy for me to know who was who. And not just if you look at it from like a play style uh, point, but in terms of like decision making as well. Um, this, for example, I don't think you will... Like this round is the best one, I think, to explain the difference. Um, I don't think you will see any top or even a passive top um go for like half a play like this and then get naded and run out and then like go back in but then also go back out and then like now get spammed through the smoke this i could see happen to a a, even a top opera but it would happen to a top opera in the worst day and this is one of afro's best days and it's happening and i think that's the that's the real difference um yeah um any questions guys Not all at the same time. Not much. <laughs> nah, it's okay. If you guys don't have any questions, I hope still you guys enjoyed uh, the session. I hope. I hope it learned you like it learned you something. I hope it taught you something um, because um, yeah, I think this is one of the things that is interesting, even for a sort of amateur player, when you are watching Counter Strike, if you are not the greatest at the game or you haven't um, played at at high level of Counter-Strike, it can sometimes be difficult to figure out what is it that makes the top players really special. 
And I think um, Monacy did things like when you pick out a Monacy demo, uh, this was one of his best demos, obviously. But if you pick out a top tier performance, one of the best from Monacy, or like a 1.9 rating from Monacy, you will sit there and think, holy shit, this guy is absolutely incredible. And if you look at a, at a 1.9 rating here from Afro, obviously, maybe we just picked a bad demo from Afro and a good demo from Monacy. Uh, that that could come down to randomness but even when i'm watching a 1.9 rating dropped here by afro i'm not sitting there and thinking holy shit afro is the greatest player of all time i think he had a couple of good rounds and i think overall he played you know super solid but i didn't see much extra and i didn't see like him winning some outrageous clutch that i didn't think was possible or doing a whole lot to create space for his teammate and make himself really tradable or doing good support utility that set up something like it was just he did his job and he probably had one of those days where he got the kills um so yeah i guess uh, i guess that's it um since there were no questions guys and since i have to as always wake up super early on uh, friday i have about seven hours of sleep if i go to sleep right now um i will end the session here but i want to thank you all for joining us uh, here at the Ghost Academy today and also for anyone who watched the YouTube video. Um, great to see so many of you at the Academy today. We've had some some days recently where there's been uh, a, like fewer amount of people um, and uh, yeah it's nice to see a day where there's, there's so many of you once again. So thank you so much for watching guys and uh, I hope well, to see you again next time. Before you leave uh, can, I, can I tell you something? Yeah. Uh, can I text you a question because I cannot ask you right now because I just uh, broke my front panel from my PC and I have to clean it up. Yeah. Uh, can I text to you later or tomorrow? Yes, 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 absolutely. Right, right, I can you. promise you that you're going to get an immediate answer, oh, but right, if you right. if you write me a message and you're part of the academy, I can promise you 100% you will get an answer on your question. Yep, yep, yep. No, there is no worries. I don't like, it's not something that I need to know it right now. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, right. absolutely do that and take care of your PC. And thank yep, you so yep. much again, guys, for, uh, for watching the session.